welcome back to Home Built by Jeff and today I'm going to have a go at trying to build a roll cage for my old 911. Uh, as you might have seen from my previous videos, I finally managed to make a tube bender that works. So I'm going to now try and put it to the test and see if I can make a cage for this car. For starters what I'm going to do is I'm just going to build a half cage for this car. But I'm still building it completely to the uh, cam specs so that I can add to it at later stages and if I want to build it into a full cage, I want to have it as still as a bolt-in, bolt-out cage uh, so I can use the car on the street. So it's, um, yeah, it's going to be a bit of uh, fun, a bit of trial and error and uh, see how we go and see if I can actually build a um, uh, half-decent looking um, structurally sound roll cage. First thing to do is the hardest part, which is to build the main hoop for the rear cage. Now, there's a few things I had to consider. There's these large sections here, just behind the B-pillar, which would be a perfect spot to mount the base plate for the main hoop. Basically, I need to work out where the roll, roll bar can go without interfering with the standard seat belts. I'm gonna mount it about there. There's enough space there to put some plates in and have a nice big plate under here that mounts the uh, roll bar to the base of the car and then it works away up from here and then roll over the top. All right now, so the first measurement I have to get with both of these trim panels in is this width down the bottom here. All right, and the next measurement I need to get is the width of the top of the cage. The widest point at the, the top of the B-pillar. All right, now I've got to work out the height of the main hoop on this roll bar. Now, the issues I had is that it's hard to get an exact measurement of the height from all the way over here at the mounting point to where the horizontal part of the top hoop starts because it's not a straight vertical run. But what I do have here across the base, the back of the car, is I have this top of the back seat that is a nice level section all the way across so I can use that as my measuring point and we've got 850 mil. Now I also have the issue that the roll bar is not going to be starting here it's going to be starting up here so what I can do is I can bring out my little hand level and stick the level down roughly where it needs to be get it so it's level 60 mil. Alright now I've got to try and work out where I want these bends to transition up to the top so I know I've got to have a bend here but I need to work out the angle I have on this B pillar here and then also the angle it needs to turn to come back down straight here so so what I need to do now is I'm just got a pole here something straight so that I can sit it roughly in place and I don't have one of those angle finders uh, I looked around for it and no one locally has them I could have ordered one online but then I had an epiphany and I thought, well, I can actually get on an app on my phone for free that does the same thing. I can stick that on the B pillar there and it tells me there that's 72 degrees. And I can get this here and I can get it so it's 90 degrees. And I can work out that I basically need the transition to start about the window sill height. So I've got to make this transition 72 degrees from the height of this B pillar and then I need to work out where to put this uh, top end. What I'm going to need to do is use my cheetah tube which I bent up in my tube bender earlier. So this little piece I can stick parallel to the B pillar where I want it and I can mark on these bits of tape I've stuck on the roof here where it gets horizontal. Okay, so now I know I want my angle to start bending here. I need to work out the height at that point. 470 mil. All right, now I've got all my measurements together. I've laid out these pieces of masking paper on the ground so I can draw up my plan. And what I've done is I've drawn a line at the bottom here and marked out my width of the base of the cage. Something I didn't mention before and something I need to factor in is I don't want the cage touching the roof of the car. I want it down about 15 millimeters. All 
Right, so there we have the shape of the main hoop. All right, so now what I've got to do is I've got to work out exactly where the bend needs to start. And I've put a mark on the top here, and that's where I want to start my bend for the top of the main hoop. And then I come around the side, and I've done basically the same thing. All right, now I've cut myself out a piece of tube, and this is one and three quarter inch tube at 0.095 inch wall thickness, which is the Australian standard that I've marked here at the dead center, which is where I'm going to work all my bends from the center out. And then I've measured 280 mil and marked it here, and that's the start of my first bend. sat the, uh, the bent tube down here and it's following my shape now so time to do the next bend. Now I'm lined back up with my layout and it is fantastic. So let's start on the bend. Alright, so we've got a uh, main hoop made. Now, it's uh, time to start getting the heights right and mounting the main hoop in. The, uh, the rule book states that the mounting plate has to be at least 120 square centimetres in area and it has to be at least 3 mil thick steel sheet. So now, what I've got to do is I've got my old trusty manila folder. I've got to make up some templates and make sure it's the right size. Alright, so I've cut out now these two plates for either side to weld in the car and for my dodgy maths they're about 150 square centimetres each out of 3 mil steel plate so it needs to be a minimum of 120 so these, are, these should uh, easily comply because it's hard to work out the exact area of these with, particularly with my little brain, somebody might be able to do it perfectly but not me. I've been scratching my head trying to work out an easy way to work out the angle I need to cut this tube so that I get that nice angle there on the foot. And what I've come up with is I've searched around the garage, I've got this piece of square tubing and a magnet and my manila folder in line where I want it. I've got the tube where I want it and it's... All right, so um, after a lot of scratching my head and trying to work out how I could actually hold the frame in place, while I did all the measuring and made all the bits and pieces and, and basically had it sit there where it needs to be, I came up with the idea I'll get some old bits of timber and I've cut out some, some chocks for the sides to sort of stop it from sliding forwards and another bit of timber at the back. The hoop is in place and it uh, it's actually sits quite nicely. The next step is put the diagonal member into the main roll bar. Now, as far as cam states, it has to be one piece and it has to be mounted above the driver's head. Okay, so I don't have a tube notcher, so I'm going to be notching the tube myself. And from what I have done my research on, basically this is the way to do it. So I've drawn in here, this is my throat line. So that is the, the line in line with this tube where I want to be. And then I've drawn my face line, and that is the center of the angle where I, where I want my notch. So... I need to mark in about one third of the tube's diameter, which is about 15 mil. Uh, and then I do my cuts on these angles here, down to the side. So it's off to the saw and see if I can do some cuts and see how it comes out. Made a couple of cuts into the tube and it's only roughly, roughly at this stage, but that will be quite good. So now I just clean it up with the uh, angle grinder and We'll see how it looks. And there we go, all uh, ready to just be tacked together. Beautiful. All right, I've gone through, I've uh, cleaned up all of the points where I'm gonna be welding on the bar, and I've just used some scotch bright. Let's get some welding on. 
All right, so I've got this center bar in, and now the next challenge is I've got to put the, the next crossbar in, which is from the, through the opposite direction. Now, obviously, it has to be in two pieces. So both tubes are cut out and uh, lying there and they're fitting really nicely like uh, they're just sitting here at the moment so now I need to clean them up and tack them in. I'm just trying to work out now where to put the harness bars for the harnesses. I don't have the racing seats I'm eventually going to use in the car yet uh, but from a bit of online research I've had a look and to see where a lot of other 911s put their harness bars and they tend to be basically in line with the level of the rear window. So I've stuck my trusty level through the car and now I can mark on the roll bar where I want to put my harness bar. All right, and the, uh, the harness bars are in after one miss cut that I ended up grinding back and it was just too short. So uh, now they're ready to be cleaned up and uh, tacked in. Now there's nothing else to uh, Start welding it all up and see if I can do some uh, nice neat welds. We'll see how it goes. All right, so I've finished up the weld. So you can sort of see here, they're not perfect, but they're I'm reasonably happy with the way they've come out. Like uh, most of these are reasonable welds. What I've done here, uh, you may be able to see, I've taped down the base plate into position and then I've got the foot which will bolt into the base plate sitting on top and lined up and I've drawn with the, uh, the marker pen all the way around the edge so I've got the location of the base of the cage. So the cage is in there sitting exactly where I want it. So next step is to uh, drill out the holes for the for the feet. All right, so now what I've done is I've gone through and I've drilled out some holes through the body of the car so the captive nuts can actually uh, sit inside there. And I've sprayed everything in a coat of weld through primer so hopefully it won't rust from the inside out. So these pieces now sit in here like this so it's time to weld them on. All right, you can see here I've made the same mounting plates as I've made at the for the front part of the cage for the, the back stays and the mounting foot is uh, bolted to the, the plate and the plate is just tacked into the body. And after a bit of playing around, I've managed to get this back stay ready to tack. Now I've just got to mark out and cut out this rear crossbar and uh, that's the main structure pretty much all sorted. The rear cross member's been uh, tacked in and the last little piece to finish off the cage that I, I'm sort of thinking is I've just made out this little cardboard template and I'll cut them out and we'll uh, have some little tabs holding it to the seatbelt mounting point. All right so I've made up a couple of these tabs uh, just cardboard template cut it out and bent it in the uh, in the vise for the hammer on the vise. I've taped the one on this side already to the seat belt uh, hole, so just tape this one up, tack it in, and then um, pull the cage out, do the final welds, and we're all done. That's it guys, it's all done. The uh, roll cage is another job marked off the books. Now, I'm far from the greatest welder, but um, I'm reasonably happy with how it turned out overall. There's uh, some of the bits I might want to uh, go back and tidy up a bit later. I've got to grind out a little bit more of these base plates and stuff like that uh, before I paint the car. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy. Uh, for the first go of building a roll cage, I think it's uh, come out quite, quite good. So um, if you're enjoying these videos, which I hope you guys are, please subscribe to my channel, Home Built by Jeff. And also you can follow me on uh, Facebook and Instagram at the same location. So um, until next week.